Good morning. How are y'all doing? Everything's well up here in Jacksonville presently. Um, we're, we're doing well. Nobody's sick up here that we're aware of. Um, I'll just say this up front. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna deal with anything of the current pandemic situation that's going on on the earth right now. It's our focus shouldn't be on that, so I'm not going to focus on it. I realize it's a it's, it's an issue, and I'm not trying to make light of it, but that's not going to be the focus today. Um, obviously, I'm coming to you from my humble little home up in Jacksonville, Florida, because we're not meeting uh, in uh, Edgewater, and I'm going to take just a few minutes this morning um, just to go over something that, that uh, has been on my mind for the last couple of months, and I, I really want to kind of get it out and encourage you, if I can, and, and make you think about some things, hopefully, in this short little bit of time that I have. Um, I'm looking at, you know, keeping the time limit on this north of a weekly thought thought of the week that we would have, which is about five or six minutes, but certainly less than, than uh, you know, a, a normal Sunday school lesson would be when I or anyone else teaches one. So um, we're looking for about 15 minutes here. So what I want to talk about today, get right into it, is comfort. I want to talk about how God Almighty, the God of the Bible, comforts the believer, the believer in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, in his death, burial, and resurrection, and, and how he comforts us in the dispensation of grace, which is the current uh, operation that God is working under, if you will. So first of all, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 4. Father, I want to take this time just to thank you for your grace in the midst of the situations in, our, in all of our lives and in all of our situations, uh, no matter what they be, uh, no matter what our shortcomings are or whatever our triumphs are uh, in the scriptures. Father, we just, we just thank you for your grace and your mercy and your love towards us through Christ Jesus, our Savior. In his name, amen. So first, uh, 2 Corinthians, rather, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 4. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 4. Uh, let's see. Well, let's just start from verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy our brother unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Achaia, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to, to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Now come with me to Romans chapter 15, verse 4. We're going, I'm just going to tie some verses in together real quick and then speak about them after that. Romans 15, verse 4. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, and this is Paul referencing back to the scriptures that they had at that time, which would be our Old Testament. And I have a hunch that that would include Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but that's for another discussion. Verse 4, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. Now, come with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. 1 Th Thessalonians chapter 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. 1 Thessalonians 1, I'm sorry, chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone. And sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. Now, I want to stop at this verse, and I want to just kind of point something out. Then I'll get back to the other stuff, because I think as I read those verses, it kind of was obvious. The first aspect of the comfort that God works through and with in the dispensation of grace is his word, the scriptures. But here, it says in verse 2, And sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. 
The presence of Timothy in their midst brought them comfort. There is an absolute necessity that we as believers fellowship. And I don't mean just sitting in the pews on, or the chairs on Sunday at church and then maybe have the, 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 you know, the potluck fellowship once a month and perhaps, um, you know, going out to, to lunch or whatever it is on some other Sundays. But it's important that we fellowship together. I, and, you know, some people make, you know, the stance that, that we, it should be physical in the sense that we're in the same proximity and, and this circumstance that we find ourselves into are in right now where we can't do that, or it, it, we probably could, but it, it's not advantageous. And, and because the concern of everybody is, is of the utmost importance, we opt to do this. But I really feel like that we can have that fellowship, even if it's over the phone, you know, or in emails, or text messages, or whatever means that, that we have to communicate in this in this 21st century that, that that we have the luxury of having. I know that some prefer it to be, you know, kind of narrow it down to the physical contact that we would have within the confines of a structure, an assembly or a church or whatever it might be. You know, I was on the phone with, with Des today, and I should say that this is not really Sunday, this is Friday afternoon, but I spoke with him this morning on the phone, and it was a wonderful, just maybe about 10 minutes to be on the phone with him and just chit-chat and talk about things and, you know, laugh about some of the stuff, not what's going on, but laughing about uh, the situation that we found ourselves in and, and why we have to do this and how we were going to resolve it. Uh, and, and just being able to talk to him and, and just the momentary time that we had to fellowship on the phone was precious to me. I don't know, you know, maybe, <laughs> I don't know. For me, it was wonderful because I don't, I don't have that very often. And we live about 115 miles to the north of most of y'all. And so it's very difficult to, to fellowship with anybody. They've got one person locally that we fellowship with on occasion, but it's, it's not the same thing. So... Having the ability to talk on the phone, meet in person, emails, text messages, whatever it may be, serve a wonderful purpose in my mind in accomplishing the fellowship that we have as brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. And so let's go back to 1 Corinthians 1 4 and look at that just for a moment. I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 1 4. And let's look at that for just a moment and where that tied in with Romans 15. And I want to touch on that. If I can, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4, where it, said, it says, uh, the, the God of all comfort, verse 3, the end of verse 3, who comforteth us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in need of trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Listen, we are saved by the grace of God. We're not saved by anything that we do. We're saved by the grace of God. And... Jesus Christ went to the cross some 2,000 years ago as a matter of historical fact. He went to the cross and died for our sins, paid for everything that was wrong with us. He was buried, and then he rose again the third day. And he, after some time, he ascended into heaven and then sent the Holy Spirit back down on the, the little flock, and they did what they were trying to do, which was to call Israel to repentance a third time to accept their Messiah, and they rejected. And they did it soundly by... Saul of Tarsus stoning uh, Stephen. And that represented the complete falling away of Israel. And when, when, when they had committed that act, when Saul was on the road to Damascus, the Lord Jesus Christ saved Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus. And in that moment, initiated the dispensation of grace. And to this day, we operate under this, this dispensation and this, this set of house rules, if you will. And God is dealing with us not on the basis of law, not on the basis of anything else, but the grace of God accomplished through the finished work of the cross. In, in Ephesians cha chapter 2 or 3 says that it was by the cross, not at the cross, but by the cross. So it's by the instrumentality of this event in history right here. The Lord Jesus Christ completely did away with all of our sin. He completely nailed the law to the cross. He, he fulfilled the righteous requirement of the law. And then in the dispensation of grace, it's taken away. And we don't relate to God on the basis of the law. We relate to God on the basis of grace. 
not what we can do, but what He has done through Jesus Christ our Savior. And He's purposed that when, when you trust the finished work of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ as the payment for your sin, He puts you into the dispensation of grace, or rather into the body of Christ, and that's where you remain. There's no getting in and out of that. It says we're sealed until the day of redemption in, in, by, you know, by the Holy Spirit. So we, we're there. And so we're in this position... And it should be the thing that changes our mind and our thinking process about how we function in time in our lives till the day we die. Remember, we have the eternal life with us right now. As a present possession, we have eternal life. Not to be taken away. It's not on probation. We get complete liberation from the law and from our old sin nature. And God imparts his nature into us. So we have the life of Christ dwelling in us. But we still live in the flesh, and we have our faults and our weaknesses. That's why Romans 7 is in your Bible. It's because Paul realized, wait a minute, something else is going on here. Because he just went through several chapters of explaining our identity in Christ, but the reality that we live in this flesh, and we're, we succumb to it, and we have problems. And so the point I'm trying to get to you about the comfort of scriptures and the, the comfort that we have of the fellowship in the body of Christ is that all of us, Put our britches on the same way, one leg at a time, and we all have our faults, we all have our weaknesses and our shortcomings, and it's through the, the, our, our, our interaction with one another and fellowship, and I feel like just being real with one another, the whole pious, you know, I, I, nothing wrong with me, nothing going on, or we might slightly allude to it. Now, I'm not asking you to air your dirty laundry. That's not my point here, because I don't want to know it. We, we have the ability to take the scriptures and look at the reality that is, that is demonstrated by the dispensation of grace coming into to force with the salvation of Saul of Tarsus and being completely forgiven, completely justified. And that's the mechanics of when we say that we're saved, you know, our, our, our sins are forgiven past, present, and future. It's wrapped up in the fact that we've been placed into Christ. It isn't like the, when, when, you know, the future sin you're going to do tomorrow, next week, next month, whatever it's going to be. You know, God already knew it's going to happen. That's why Jesus Christ went to the cross. He knew you weren't going to be able to do the right thing in and of yourself. And so to get it right and to make sure that it would work, Jesus Christ performed what he did at the cross. And all you have to do is believe that he did it for you. And that's the moment that God takes you and places you into Christ. And so the comfort that you, because listen, when you fail, when I fail, when any of us in the body of Christ fail and we don't live up to who we are in Christ, we don't have anything that we can, we have no recourse, no remedy in the sense of that what religion and denominationalism would have us think that, you know, you've got to ask God to forgive you, you know, you're out of fellowship, but you're still saved, a bunch of hoodly do. Really the deal is, is you have to come to the scriptures and you have to go to Romans Read through Romans and, and, and all the other verses and chapters and things in Paul's epistles that detail the work and the finished work of the cross. And you have to sit there and stand on those words. And that's why your Bible, the King James Bible, and the issue about which Bible is right is so paramount. Now, to close this up, come over to 1 Thessalonians. Or is it 2 Thessalonians? I always forget. I have to look. It'll be... First Thessalonians chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2. The thing here is to remember again that we're saved by grace, not by yourself, not by your works, not by anything that you can do, not even that, because you'd never know, as others have said, that, you, that you'd ever get it right. So it, it is in, you have to depend upon somebody greater than you because you have to look in the mirror. You know. I know that we, we fall short. Even on your best day, we fall short. It, it's just, it's, it's not there. God won't have it. He has what Jesus Christ has accomplished in his view as to what matters. So when you trust that Jesus Christ has died for your sins, God imparts his life into you, and he gives it to you as a free gift until the day of redemption. And so when, when you pull yourself up by your bootstraps, as it were, when you fall on your face, and, and when I mean by pulling yourself up, I'm talking about getting into the Word and look, letting the verses that tell you that, that God justifies the ungodly through faith in the blood of Christ and all the stuff that we understand through, through the, the, 
the, the teaching about the cross in, in the book of Romans, you, you, ha you come to a place where you have to let that be the thing that lifts you up and buoys you up in, in the midst of your self-doubt and, and your, your conscience because it'll bother you. It'll eat your lunch because it, it, it's talking that devil talk. Are you really saved? Are you sure? I go through it. I deal with it all the time. And the only recourse I have is the scriptures. And it's the thing that builds me up. And so when I come across somebody else in the body of Christ who is struggling or has struggled and, and wavering or whatever it may be, it's these scriptures that I can share, that we should share, that comforts that person. Now, the verse in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, we know it well. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when, we rece when ye received rather the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. God magnifies his word above all his name. Every word of God is pure. This is scripture. This is equally scripture as anything you'd find in Psalms or in Genesis or, or Revelation or anywhere in between. This is just the scriptures to us today. Now, in light of that, one, one last thing, if I can just jump to it real quick. And it's, it's in Galatians. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. And th this, is, this is the way we should function when, we're, when we find ourselves in the situation where we're going to help somebody or need to help somebody or, or somebody reaches out to us. And, and we find ourselves in, in that unique position when we get to take. You're taking a human being, a, 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 a person who has been sanctified, washed, forgiven, sanctified, whatever order it's supposed to go in, it's not really the issue here, what I'm trying to say, but all these things have been accomplished, and it, God has given it to us as members of the body of Christ. When one weeps, the other, you know, we all should weep. When one rejoices, we should all rejoice. We're all members of one another, and it's time that we really sink our teeth into that reality, but when we find ourselves in a situation where someone's in a fall, goofed up in something, or has been goofed up in something, and you're trying to help them get them back on their feet in their thinking process, because they, they, God has made them to stand. I mean, who are you to, to, to fuss at somebody's servant? You know, God makes them stand. I'm loosely quoting something that Paul said, but God is, makes that person, that believer, stand because he's in Christ. But he still needs to live out, work out his salvation with fear and trembling in the realities of the day-to-day -day life and this is the verse that, that should check us because, you know, you, 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 know, you help this person, you help that person. You, some people start thinking you're all that in a bag of chips, and you may not be. Your chips might have got stale. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. Why? Considering thyself. Because you know... You're a bag of tricks. I'm a bag of tricks. We're all a bag of tricks. We're all saved by grace. Considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Comfort. We comfort one another by the knowledge of who we are in Christ and the grace that God has bestowed upon us, the great love with where he loves us, loved us, loves us. He does love us and is demonstrated in the cross. And the comfort that we have in the fellowship with one another on a day-to-day -day basis to keep each other encouraged so that we walk the way we should walk. No man is an island. We're all saved by grace. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this day and for your grace and your mercy and your love towards us in Christ Jesus, our Savior. In Christ's name, amen. Y'all have a good week.